Lord. Some upon it says, You made, you made a, a way for me. Yes, you did, Jesus. You made, oh, you made a way for me. Yes, you did, God. He's been, he's been a, a friend. Anybody believe that this morning? I said he's been a, a, a friend for me. Yes, he has. She said, she said, Jesus, you've been, you've been, you've been such a, such a good friend, God. For that Jesus, I gotta say, I gotta say, I just want to thank, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm, your grace is forever great, Lord. And I love you, Jesus. I'll forever be indebted in your name. I'll pray for you. You pray for me. Y'all know it. Sing it with me. And watch God change things. Ooh, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm praying for you. And you pray for me. And watch God. And watch God change yeah, 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 Jesus. One last time, said I, I'll pray for you. And if you pray for me, yes, Jesus, God will change things. One more song before I leave. It says, Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. thing I've ever, ever done. Some part it says, in his arms I feel protected. Sing it with me. In his arms I feel protected. In his arms never did connected oh, oh in his arms I feel protected and there's no place I ran rather be can I sing it one last time oh falling in love I'm gonna let you sing it Yeah. 
And it's the best thing I've ever, ever done. Oh, it's the best thing I've ever, ever done. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, it's the best thing I've ever, ever done. Nobody do me like you do, Father. Not my sister, not my brother, not my friend, no. They ain't equal to you, Jesus. Best thing I've ever done. Oh, last time, yeah. It's the best thing I've ever, ever done. We give you all the praise, Jesus. The sound that saved the ranch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. Good morning, good morning. We thank you for tuning in to our broadcast this morning. We love you with a godly love and appreciation. Hey, listen, wasn't you blessed this morning? by my main man, Frankie Johnson, the ministry of Frankie Johnson. I can get ready to trip y'all out. I've been telling y'all for a while now that the album is coming soon. Y'all thought I was playing, didn't you? The album is here. <laughs> the album is finally here, man. My boy Frankie Johnson to drop the album. Matter of fact, if you want to know more about the album, I encourage you to do that. You see him every week, but now you get to hear him in a different flavor, different style. You're going to love this. I encourage you to go to his Facebook page, Frank Johnson. Go to his Facebook. Go right now. I don't mind you going there and then coming back, but make sure you come back though, all right? Frank Johnson. Matter of fact, it's coming on the bottom of the screen. Um, and listen, we're so uh, peacock proud of what this brother has been able to do, man. He's been uh, soothing souls for a long time through his gift that the Lord has placed on his life. So make sure you go check it out right now, right now. But hey, come on back. Well, you know what? Just go after the message is over. <laughs> but I do want you to go check out my boy album, man. I'm proud of him. Come on, do my favor wherever you are. Put those hands together for Brother Frankie Johnson. Just wherever you are in your home, whatever. I'm so glad the album is out. Will you go to the Lord in prayer with me? Father God, we love you. We thank you and we bless you. We thank you that this is a day that you have made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. God, I pray that this word speaks to every house, every ear, every heart that's tuned in. God, I kill all distractions in the name of Jesus. That they will not be distracted from this word. But they'll tune in and won't log off. Now empower me, your man, so to preach with clarity, with power and simplicity. That the youngest of the oldest may understand it. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, put those blessed hands together wherever you are. Whether you're in Florida, whether you're in Georgia, whether you're in Tennessee, whether you're in Virginia, whether you're in Africa, whether you're in Jamaica, it don't matter. Wherever you are, God's love is able to reach you. So you ought to put those hands together wherever, wherever you are. Hey, let's go to the book of Nehemiah. It's time to go to work now. Thank you all for giving like you do. Continue to give. Please continue to give. All right. Nehemiah chapter 2. I want to read one verse from Nehemiah chapter 2. Big shout out to Sharon Redman for the Black Lives Matter t-shirt. All right. If you want one, hit her up. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 17. One verse. And it says this. Then I said to them, you see the bad situation we are in. That Jerusalem is desolate and its gates burned by fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem so that we will no longer be a reproach. I'm going to read that one more time. Then I said to them, you see the bad situation we are in in America? <laughs> I'm sorry, Jerusalem. America, Jerusalem, yeah. It's desolate. And our gates have been burned by fire. Come, let us rebuild the walls 
of Jerusalem so that we would no longer be a reproach. I want to preach to my community. I want to preach to my people this morning. We've been in a series called I Can't Come Down. This is the second installment of I Can't Come Down. Today I want to preach. I got a plan. I got a plan. Hey, wherever you are, I want you to do me a favor. Look at somebody and say, Pastor got a plan. Pastor got a plan. Let's go to work. Nation of love, let's go to work. If you've been watching just a little bit of TV, you will see that just about every business, every organization, every city, every state, and every country, they're all putting plans in place to reopen. You know, one of my favorite stations on TV is ESPN. I love ESPN, y'all. I love to see Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless go at it. But here's what I've been watching a lot about on ESPN. I've been watching how the NFL, Major League Baseball, and the NFL, they're all at the table discussing plans on how to reopen. Y'all, all all this stuff that's happening in the world is striking me sermonically. Because while they have a plan to reopen, the relevant question for us this morning is, do we have a plan? A plan for what? Somebody's asking me, and I'm glad you asked. I'm talking about a plan for our community, a plan for our nation, a plan for our families. And here's what I've discovered, y'all, that now is the time for us to come out of our bubbles that we built. Well, we don't let nobody else in, but now is the time to burst those bubbles, come out of them, lock arms, and do something that's never been done before. We need a plan. Mm -hmm. We, we, We need to do something not so individualized, but we need to do something as a people collectively to build something in such a way that the generation that comes behind us can climb on top of it. And when they get on top, they can make the same declaration we're making this morning. I can't come down. Mm -mm. Hey, hey, I'm ready to jump into this text, Jay. I'm ready to go to work this morning. Because um, last week I told you I was preaching I got a plan. Hey, I, I want to do something. Hey, hey, Deacon Levin Myers in Real One Realty, shameless plug, I'm going to rewind that, say it again. Deacon Levin Myers with Real One Realty. That's a shameless plug because I love the brother. Will you and your team take about 20 minutes to engage me? I, I want to challenge y'all not to log over. Hey, Nation of Love. Will you stick with me and not log off Nation of Love? But guess what? If you log off, I'm going to ask God to let you lose the charger to your phone for the whole day. <laughs> hey, 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 Peavy, you and that precious chocolate brother, your husband named Martel, the gentle giant, will y'all entertain me for just one second as I preach this sermon? I got a plan. Because I believe that what we're getting ready to discuss this morning is going to help all of us do a little bit better. Come on, look at somebody in your house and tell them we're getting ready to be better after this morning. Mm -hmm. I'm so godly proud of my good son in the ministry, Elder Brian Bowie, from Making Disciple Ministries. That brother preached last Thursday with some power. And here we're getting ready to start on part two called I Got a Plan. So come on in and look closer. When we stopped last week in chapter one, Nehemiah was in the middle of doing one of the most important things a believer can do before he busts any moves. (laughs) Come on in and look closer. Nehemiah was checking with God. Hey, would you get mad at me if I told you that don't ever bust a move without checking with God first? Don't ever jump into a relationship without checking with God first? Don't ever spend silly money without checking with God first? Hello, somebody. You got to check with God before you make any moves. Why? Because see, un- because you understand that when you check with God, God will give you the right plan. And I want to suggest to you that if you plan without God, that's like building a house in the sand. It has the propensity and the ability to fail and to fall. And somebody can testify to that already, that you made some plans without God. But here's what you come to discover, that you're too old to be doing that now, that you done bust too many moves without God. 
and you can't bust no more moves without God because you're in your 30s and your 40s now. You ain't got time to do the same stuff you used to do. Now you need God in everything you do. Hey, come here. You can't bust no more moves without getting a plan from God. Come on, look at somebody in your house and tell them, I got to get with God. I got to get with God. I got to get with God. And so in chapter 1, Nehemiah has a burden to rebuild. And he asked God to fix the king's heart to request, to receive his request. And guess what? God did it. That's found in Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. Read it when you get a chance. But hey, come here, y'all. I'm tripping already early in this sermon because I'm pe- tripping because I'm peeping a parenthetical. The Bible lets us know that Nehemiah has a burden to go to the city to rebuild the walls. Mm-hmm. The gates have been burned. The walls are in rubble. And it's been like that a long time. I'm getting ready to take off and run, y'all. The Bible lets us know that Nehemiah has a burden to rebuild the walls. The walls have been torn down a long time. The city has been in rubbles a long time. Now, here's the question you should be asking me with your beautiful, brilliant, and bright self. You should be asking me, Pastor. Why would the government officials allow the walls and the gates to be burned down for that long and do absolutely nothing about it? Why would they allow a certain group of people to live unprotected and do absolutely nothing about it? Why would the officials allow the walls to be burned and allow the gates to be torn down and do absolutely nothing about it? Um, hey, Jay. I ain't the brightest person in the world. But can I give you one reason why people who have authority will allow its citizens to live in ruin? Here it is, Frank. It's because they don't value the humanity of the people who live in obscurity. Did you hear what I said? That when people who are in authority, who have the resources to help change communities, won't put the resources in the community to help change them, it's because they don't value the humanity of the people who live in obscurity. Mm -hmm. Because when you value people, you won't throw them in the hood. I'm sorry, throw them in the colony. I'm sorry. Or stack them on top of each other in a community and then have police circling the hood all day every day to make sure you can't come out the hood and if you get too far out the hood they're going to jack you up and take you to jail and take you right back to the hood you got to get with people who know how to value you because when you value people come here you won't come into their communities and purchase their home for 20 g's and flip it for a hundred and thousand for a hundred and fifty thousand and gentrify the neighborhood when you value people yeah you won't spray them with water hoses and allow dogs to bite them when you are valued by people hello somebody people will allow you to walk to your sister house when your car is parked because you don't had a good time that night and they won't arrest you when you are valued by people people won't put their knees on the back of your neck until you're no longer able to breathe and all I'm trying to say to you is that every now and again you got to make sure that you value yourself when it seems like nobody else does oh that's a good place to preach right there will you do me a favor and look at somebody who's real cute in your house and if you ain't got nobody cute in your house just look at me uh-huh. and say I value myself and when you learn how to value yourself you won't you won't have to seek validation from people who look at you in a flawed way because of the melanin in your skin did you hear what I just said all I'm trying to say to you is part of the reason why some of our communities are in the situation they're in is because there's a flawed value placed on people with too much melanin in their skin Hey, you know what? I got a good friend, my brother. I love him to death. I will cut you about it. His name is Pastor Wonder Jones. I love my brother dearly. Here's what this bad brother from CYM says. He says, people can get you to stay in poverty when they can convince you that you have no value. I'm going to say that again. Pastor Wonder Jones, and I'm quoting him. He says, people can get you to stay in poverty when they convince you that you have no value. Can I ask you a question with your beautiful self? Have you decided how much you're worth? 
Or have you allowed somebody else to decide that for you? Because when you know your worth, you won't settle for anything. Come here with your brilliant self. You know you're more valuable than how they treat you. You know you're more valuable than how they pay you. You know you're more valuable than how they, their energy towards you. Will you do me a favor and high five somebody in your house and tell them I'm more valuable than all of this? I, listen, I'm worth, I'm worth more than minimum wage. I'm worth more than 50000 and I'm valuable. And when you know your value and when you know your worth, you won't settle for anything. When you know your worth, you won't settle for somebody going upside your head. When you know your worth, you won't settle for people talking to you any kind of way. I wish I had about 20 people who can type in the comment box. I know my worth. I know what my value is. And as a black community, all I'm saying to us is that if they don't value us, we at least got to value ourselves. Come here with your beautiful black self. Hey, I, I, I want to go to work in this text now. I, I, I want to jaywalk straight to verse number 11. In uh, verse 12, look at what it says. So Nehemiah, he, he gets the, the orders from the king to be able to go to Jerusalem. And so watch what he says. He says, so I arrived in Jerusalem three days later. Mm -hmm. I slipped out. That brother said, I slipped out during the night. Taking only a few others with me. I had not told anyone about the plans God had put in my heart for Jerusalem. Did you see that? This brother says um, that, that, that God had put a plan together for me. And then the Bible says this. The brother slipped out at night. I, I, I know what you're saying. You're saying why in the world would Nehemiah slip out at night? Come here. <laughs> Uh, well, well why, why not slip out during the daytime? I want to suggest to you that maybe the brother slips out at night because the city is quiet and he doesn't want to be seen and he wants to make sure that he's hearing from God. And I'm reading about 20 of y'all minds right now. Because I know you and you know me. We know each other. We family. Come here with your cute self. Because if y'all saw Nehemiah out at night and he'd have slipped out, Y'all would probably think the brother was creeping and he shouldn't have no business being out that late. Some of y'all would have peeked out your window, saw Nehemiah, you know, ride on the source real slow. You would have took a picture of that brother, posted it on Facebook and say, I saw Pastor Blue. I'm sorry, I saw Nehemiah out too late. Are you with me in the house this morning? And you know what? Can I suggest to you that we so nosy that we always getting in God's way? Come here, somebody, because here's what I've come to discover, that sometimes God does his best work in the dark and people can't even do what God say trying to worry about the opinions of other people that's why I like this brother Nehemiah the Bible says he slipped out at night and I want to suggest to you that everybody who's out in the night ain't creeping mm -hmm. the only reason you think they're creeping is because that's where your mind at but when people are in tune with God when you see somebody on a mission for God I don't care what time it is just because that brother at the liquor store don't mean he getting liquor come here somebody just because that brother pull up to the dope house so mean he's buying dope. You don't know what mission, hello somebody, that God has got them on. May I suggest something to all of us, including myself, every now and again, it's just good to mind your own business. Go ahead, put that in the comment box. Just mind your own business. Because you don't know what God is up to. The Bible says that Nehemiah slips out at night. And watch what verse 15 says. He says, so I went up by the raven and inspected the wall, inspected the wall. Then I entered the valley gate again and returned. This is getting ready to get good. You better not go nowhere with your cute self. If you log off right now, you're going to lose your charger for the rest of the day. You ain't going to have no fun. <laughs> Watch this, don't go nowhere. The officials did not know where I had gone or what I had done. Nor had I told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or the rest who did the work. Did you see that right there? Look who Nehemiah says he didn't tell what he was doing. Um, Nehemiah says, I ain't even tell the priests what I was doing. C come here. Nehemiah says that this plan that God gave me, I can't tell nobody right now. Don't, don't, don't miss this. He says this is too important for me to tell anybody about what I'm getting ready to do. 
One of the biggest mistakes I ever made in ministry. God, help me right here, Holy Ghost. One of the biggest mistakes I ever made is telling the plan too soon. Because when you tell it too soon, people will try to shut it down before it ever goes up. I want to encourage somebody right now that if God is telling you something, you got to be selective about who you share it with. You can't share the plan with everybody because everybody don't hear from God like you do. This brother said, I ain't even tell the priest what I was doing. Nehemiah, you cold-blooded. You mean to tell me that you ain't even tell the priest? You ain't even tell the ones who go into the temple to make sacrifices unto God before the people so that the sins will be forgiven? Nehemiah, are you meaning to tell me that you did not even tell the priest what you were doing? And I say, God, why wouldn't you let the brother tell the priest? God says, because just because they're saved don't mean they can always be trusted. Come here, somebody. I want to talk to somebody who can testify that there was some saved people you told some stuff to and you heard it again somewhere else but it wasn't like you told it to them because just because somebody say they love Jesus don't mean they can keep a secret hello somebody I come to discover that people will tear you out tell your business thwart your plans you gotta be careful in who you can find with I know you are ready for me to tell you what the plan is but I gotta tell you how to operate before you even get to the plan you can't tell everybody what you're doing and what God is doing in your life. You got to be selective about who you share information with. And because just because they saved and got a title don't mean they can be trusted with the plan. Because I've come to discover, y'all, that visionless people are intimidated by visionaries. Yeah, they're not happy with your progress. They don't want to see you go higher. They don't want to see you be stretched wider. They don't want to see you dig deeper. And they'll cut you off before you get started. How do you know, Pastor? Because I done been there, done that, got a t-shirt, the book back, and a hat to prove it. Do you hear what I say? People will cut you off before you even get started. You got to be selective about sharing what God has placed in your heart. Can, can, can I keep working? And I'm almost done. So he rides through the city and he inspects the walls. <laughs> That's crucial to the plan. What's crucial to the plan is the inspection period. Hello, somebody. Because when you do proper inspection, it raises expectation. Did you hear what I said? That expectations are not raised properly when there is not a proper inspection of what you're trying to accomplish. Hello, somebody. I'll talk about that later on in the week. Yeah. When we don't properly inspect, we will have low expectations. That's right. In verses 17 and 18. 18, watch what your boy Nehemiah does. At the right time, here's what this brother said. 17 and 18, watch this. He, in other words, he says, hey, I, I got a plan. But look how he says it, verse 17 and 18. Um, he says, uh, but now I said to them, you know very well that we are in trouble. Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Our communities have been lying in ruins for a long time. Watch this. Let us rebuild the walls of our community and end this disgrace. Then I told him about how gracious the hand of God has been on me and about my conversation with the king. And here's what the people replied. They replied at once, yes, let us rebuild our community. So they began the good work. Hey, listen, I got a plan. I want to suggest to y'all that I ain't perfect by a long shot, but I got a plan. I can't give you all the plan today. I'm only going to give you about 5%. You got to catch me throughout the week. I'm going to be doing some lives and sharing more of the plan. But I just want to share just a little bit with you if you don't mind. How about we start with a social plan? Mm -hmm. The social plan involves us valuing ourselves because obviously nobody else does. Because when we value ourselves and value each other as people, we don't have to seek validation from nobody else. When we commit to valuing ourselves socially, then we speak differently towards each other. Hello, somebody. Hey, will you do me a favor? 
The next time you ride through your community of color, will you just roll down your windows and just wave at everybody you ride past? How many times have you rolled through the community and ain't even speak to nobody? I'm trying to help us develop a plan now socially so we can start loving each other again. Because when we love each other, we protect each other. When we love each other, we won't kill each other. When we love each other, hello somebody, we'll give to each other. There used to be a time when I can go to my neighbor's house and for a pack of Kool-Aid and a cup of sugar and they'll give it to me. Now we don't even know our neighbor's name. No, God forbid. No, let's start rebuilding our communities by knowing each other again. Hello, somebody. I got a plan. Come here, somebody. I'll talk more about that Tuesday night. Can I talk about an economic plan? Mm -hmm. Hey, 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 here's what I want us to do. I want us to get out of debt. Did you hear what I said? Get out of debt. Why, pastor, do you want us to get out of debt? Because the Bible says, oh, no man, nothing. That's why I want us to get out of debt. I want us to build our credit. Hello, somebody. Here's my plan for us. In the next six months, don't you run your credit. Don't you buy nothing crazy. Don't you buy nothing silly. Don't you buy nothing that's not going to add value to you or your family's life. For the next six months, come here with your cute self. I know you like to spend money at Macy's. I know you still like to shop in the nice department stores, but what if you just work what you got in your closet? Just repackage it, repurpose it. I know you don't wear them jeans before, but just get a new shirt and put them jeans, girl. You still gonna be fly because it ain't about what you got on. It's about what you got in. Hello, somebody. I want you to save your money, get out of debt, build your credit, pay your bills on time, and watch what we can do as a community. Are you understanding what I'm telling you? What if we build our net worth to a point to where we don't have to shop nowhere else but with our own people? I feel like running right here, Frank. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Can I tell you another piece of the economic plan and that I talk about more on Tuesday night? You got to know how to support black-owned businesses. As a matter of fact, some of them I'm getting ready to pop up in the comment section on the screen. Hello, somebody. Because watch this now. You got to be able to support black-owned businesses. It's amazing, y'all, that everybody spends money with everybody else except for black-owned businesses. Hello, somebody. And it's amazing that we'll spend money with everybody else except for black owned businesses I want to I want to challenge us for the next six months for the next six months that you support a black business as often as you can hey and do me a favor as we're getting ready to to boost up this economic plan do me a favor that if the black business don't get it right the first time promise me you won't put their business on Facebook promise me you won't put their business on Instagram will you be patient with them just like you're patient in the line at McDonald's or will you be patient with them just like you're patient with the people who get your order wrong at Burger King will you please be patient with that beautiful black business as they're moving their way up to success be patient with them for the next six months try to support black owned businesses as often as you can hey I want to suggest to you that the world is changing and don't you be afraid to change either I'm not talking about change and getting your faith but I'm talking about change how you do business I want to challenge you within the next six months I want you to find a black owned bank who values your sun bathed skin tone and I want you to start banking black did you hear what I said everything is changing the world is changing why are you afraid to change why are you afraid to put your money in a black owned bank that matter of fact some are popping up on the screen it's not a whole lot of them but if we placed our money there it puts us in greater position to be able to get loans that we need lines of credit that we need for our businesses it places us in good position as a people to be able to pull ourselves up by the boot by our own bootstraps and make some economic process in this world the plan is to bank black hey I got a question for you what's your fear 
Have we been so conditioned to think that the only people that we can trust with our money are people who don't have the same skin complexion? I want to suggest to you that there are some brilliant, bright, black brothers and sisters, hello somebody, who are smart beyond measure, who know way more about banking than you and I. And at some point, we got to get the whitewash out of our head and be able to trust the gift that God placed in them. Bank black. Hey, can I give you another challenge? I said go to black businesses. I said start banking black. But can I give you another one? Um, will you do me a favor and find some black restaurants to eat at for the next six months? Hello, somebody with your cute self. Eat at a black restaurant who values your sun babe skin tone. How, you know what? You trip me out with your sedity self. How you grow up, grew up eating from your mama and grandmama table, and now that you done got older, you act like you can't eat that no more. Hey, c- c- come here. Man, please. Black folk are so creative that they've already put a healthy spin on soul food. You don't believe me? Go ask Tish Turner down there with granny hands. Hello, somebody. She'll show you how to eat right and eat healthy, but not miss the taste and the flavor that your grandmama had and your granddaddy had when you sat at that table. But when you remember, come here, we was all naughty head and, 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 and snotty nose and we ate at that table and our food was so good. To this day, I still ain't found nobody who can make turkey wings like Barbara Jefferson. Good God Almighty. I remember those days. And when I go down to Granny Hands with Tish Turner, she make those turkey wings in a healthy way. But I still taste my grandmama in them. I want to push you for the next six months to find black restaurants to eat at. And hey, guess what? When we start valuing each other and when we start putting the economic dollars, our resources and start building up our own economy, then we'll start seeing money chase us because now we value each other because money will chase you down because money follows value. Hello, somebody. Money follows value. When things are valued, money follows it. When we value our black businesses, when we value our black banks, when we value each other, I promise you we can build up an economic base for the next six months. I want us to bank to eat and to do business with black people. And I know what somebody's saying. You're saying, preacher, you don't sound very Christian right now because how you're a pastor and you're telling people just to do black stuff. What I'm suggesting to you is, yes, I'm a pastor, but I also understand that for years, 401 years, black lives have not mattered in this country. So please excuse me if I sound a little harsh or please excuse me if you don't like my rhetoric. The, the rhetoric, the reality is, is that black business matter, black dollars matter, black lives matter. And if nobody else sees that, then we have to see the value in ourselves. And to my white brothers and sisters, you know I love you dearly. And I want you to join in this with me. I want you to put your money in a black bank. I want you to go to a black-owned restaurant. White brother and sister, you know I love you. I want you to do business with black people. Yes, allow us to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. Because money will chase down value. And we got to learn how to value ourselves. I'm going for the rest of this week. I'm going to be laying out a plan in every area. I'm going to be laying out a plan on Tuesday for our health. Can I keep going? I don't want to get too deep into that. Watch this because I'm almost done. And as I look close at the last two verses of this chapter, Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 19 and 20. Here's what it says. But when Sembalit, Sembalit, Tobiah, and Geshem the Arab heard of our plan... They scoffed us. And here's what they said. What are you doing? Are you rebelling against the king? They asked. Verse 20 says, I replied, the God of heaven will help us succeed. We, his servants, will start rebuilding this community, this wall. But you have no share, legal right, or historic claim in Jerusalem. Don't miss this. Hey, I ain't got time to preach it this week. But next week, you got to tune back in. Because next week, I'm preaching a sermon called, When the Haters Show Up. I'm going to say that again. Next week, I'm preaching a sermon called, When the Haters Show Up. But let me tease you just a little bit. Because please don't think that because we're trying to put an economic plan in place, 
that the enemy is going to sit back and apathetically and, let, and not let you accomplish God's divine purpose for your life. The enemy is coming to thwart the plan. I want to suggest to you that the devil got a job to do, so don't trip when he do his job. Come here, somebody with your beautiful self, that whenever you got a plan, the haters, they always going to show up. And I'm talking to somebody right now that it seemed like every time you try to do something positive, every time you try to do something constructive, here comes a hater. Every single time you try to rebuild your credit, here comes a hater. Every time you try to lose weight, here comes a, cre- a hater. Every time you try to go back to school, here comes a hater. And the haters are just doing their job. When you look at somebody in your house and tell them the haters are coming, the haters are coming, the haters are coming. But you know what I come to discover? That when the haters come, I still can't make no excuses. I just make adjustments. That's right. I'm not going to stop doing what I do. I'm not going to stop the plan. I'm not going to stop serving. I'm not going to stop living. I'm not going to stop building. I'm not going to stop valuing my brother and sister. Just because the haters show up, the haters got a responsibility. And their responsibility is to show up, to thwart the plan of God. I want to suggest to you and I that for the next six months, as we begin to build economically, for the next six months, as we begin to build and get our bodies in shape, and the next six months, as we begin to get healthy mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, the haters will come to throw you off your plan. But will you do me a favor? Will you stand with me wherever you are and put your hands on your hips like this and just turn to the side just a little bit and say, I will not buck. I will not fall. I will not bow, but this time I'm sticking to the plan. I'm sticking to the plan. I know the hate is coming. Last time they threw me off my game. Last time it, it messed up the plan. I heard what God said last time. And the haters came and pushed me to the left. I ain't have the tonal vision that I have now. I'm talking to you as I'm talking to me. But it can't happen this time, no. We got a plan. Tuesday, I want you to join me right back here Tuesday. Because I'm going to dig deeper into this plan. The economic portion of it. But here's my challenge you starting today. Oh, by the way, happy Father's Day. Here's my challenge to you for the next six months next six months spend dollars on black business next six months we are creative people to my white brothers and sisters spend dollars with black business that's simple six months and watch what happens Six months, work on nothing but your credit. Six months, start chipping away out that debt. Watch what happens. Can you be disciplined for six months with me? And go on this journey with me for the next six months? Hey, can I tell you what else you need to be disciplined in and I'm done? Be disciplined in your giving for the next six months. There's work to do that you can't do. But when you give, we got people that we can get out and do it. As a matter of fact, I want to challenge you right now to go ahead and start giving right now so that we can partner together and rebuild the wall. Nehemiah said, hey, let's rebuild. The people said, yes, let's rebuild. Will you rebuild with me? Will you join me back Tuesday as I dig deeper into some specifics of the plan? For our community. Because it's time to rebuild. There's a whole other generation coming up. And they need us to be smart. Have tunnel vision, tunnel focus. To get the job done. The haters are coming. They gonna show up. We gotta keep building. Hey, let me pray for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for that person who's watching now, who understands exactly what I'm saying. I pray that you touch their life, 
Give them the discipline for the next six months to push this economic plan through that we'll discuss more on Tuesday. Bless this plan, God. Bless it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, it's time to give. Come on, it's time to give. Let's give God a hand and clap of praise. It's time to give. Take out those phones. Cash App, dollar sign, NMBCLC. It's coming up on the, on the screen. Will you go ahead and do me a favor? Give good today. Help us do the work. Help us do the work. At least once a month, I'd like to challenge our leadership. This time I'm challenging our leadership. Will you, will you, will you join me in giving $150 today? That's just for our leaders. And some of you may be saying, Pastor, I ain't a leader. But I'm going to accept that challenge as well. Well, come on with your bad self. But all our deacons, ministers, elders, pastors, teachers, ministry leaders, my challenge to you is $150 today. Pastor, why are you saying that? That's on top of your tithe and offering. Why are you saying that? Because we got work to do and we can't come down. <laughs> and it's going to take all of us collectively to do this work. Hey, I love you. I'm proud of you. Catch me Tuesday, Bible study Wednesday, that bad boy, Pastor Brian Bowie on Thursday. We love you so very much. It's Pastor Bowie. Grace and